This is the second lecture for Unit 4 on development. Today we're going to talk about cognitive development. How do our brains as people mature from infancy all the way up until adulthood? Starting with cognitive development in the newborn. Researchers have found that infants become habituated to things. One of the best examples of this is if you give an infant a new toy, they're very, very interested in it. But over time, they no longer like it as much as they did from the very beginning. Researchers have found that infants pay more attention to new objects rather than ones that they have seen before, which shows that they are learning. When you give them an old toy, they think, oh, I've already seen this. This is not new to me. I want something new. Another example of this, oops, is they showed infants two pictures, one that looked similar to a human face with the eyes and a nose, and one that did not. They found that Infants stare longer at pictures that look like humans' faces. In fact, they stare twice as long. And when shown hybrid dogs and cats, something that doesn't look like a normal animal, they stare even longer. They recognize it as being different. So learning absolutely does occur in the newborn stage. When you are born, you are born with almost all of the brain cells you will ever have. And what happens as you develop is those brain cells get pruned. This is called pruning, just like you would prune bushes in your yard. The nervous system at birth is very immature. And as you start to grow physically and mentally, what happens is your neurons, these neural networks, become even stronger. They're making connections with one another. So when that happens, the neural networks get stronger, but you're losing these neurons that you had at birth. That's because they're being associated and connected with other things. Your frontal lobe is growing very rapidly during your development and also those association areas that help us basically make sense of everything that's going on. As far as physical development goes, there's a process known as maturation. So there are these milestones that doctors will look for every time a child is brought into their office are they sitting up at six months? Are they crawling at eight to nine months? Are they walking by one year of age? Are they pretty stable walking by 15 months of age? If something happens, your child isn't reaching those milestones, isn't maturing properly, there could be something physically or cognitively going on that the doctors might uh, begin to look for. That's not to say that children aren't delayed a lot and end up being totally fine, but these are kind of the major uh, milestones that doctors will look for. As far as maturation and infant memory go, the earliest age of conscious memory is about three and a half years of age. Unfortunately, most of us cannot remember anything before that time. And by the year, or by five years of age, the child has a sense of self. They have an increased long-term memory. They can organize their memory. But most of us do not have memories before three and a half years. They call it childhood amnesia. It's just because our the parts of our brain that store memories, the hippocampus and things like that, aren't mature enough at that point in time. They did a study where they told uh, children about a fire alarm being pulled when they were younger, and four-year-olds could recall hearing the fire alarm. Oh yes, I remember that. But before three, they definitely could not. Now, today's lecture is going to focus around a researcher named Jean Piaget, who was a French researcher who was interested in cognitive development in children. And remember, cognitive development means our mind. So anytime you hear cognitive, cognition, you're thinking about memory, you're thinking about our mind, you're thinking about thinking. That is cognition. So Piaget was watching these children in a lab, and he noticed that all of them were making the same mistakes. And he was interested in why these children were making mistakes. He called them scale errors. And he wanted to figure out, well, how do children mature cognitively? So you can see this little girl's trying to go down a slide that's obviously for a toy. This little boy is trying to get in a car that is a toy. So he was looking at these mistakes saying, hmm, how do do children develop cognitively? And what he believed is that our cognitive development is shaped by the errors that we make, but also by our active attempt to make sense of the world. So he was interested in studying 
cognitive development in newborns all the way up until 12 year olds. And the first thing that he says is, we try to make sense of our world by creating schemas. A schema is a mental mold in which we pour all of our experiences. So you probably have a schema for a dog. When someone says dog, you probably have a mental image for what that dog looks like. It might be a big dog. It might be a small dog. You have a schema for a chair. What are the things that a chair has to have in order for it to be a chair? So schemas are the way in which we kind of categorize things in our life. Now, children often make errors in their schemas. So for example, you've got a two-year-old learning what a cow is from her dad reading a book to her. She then later on sees a moose and calls it a cow. And her mother says, no, that's not a cow, it's a moose. The, she then goes on to see a baby moose and she says, that's a moose. And then her mom's gonna correct her and say, that is a baby moose. So she's constantly having her schemas changed. Most children are going to make errors when they're trying to assimilate things into their schemas and when they're trying to accommodate for things in their schemas. And this is probably the hardest um, thing for students to understand or they often get them mixed up. So make sure that you understand, it's very important. Assimilation involves incorporating new experiences into our current understanding of our schemas. Accommodation is the process of adjustifying a schema and modifying it and calling it accommodation. So going back to this moose example, when this little girl, Gabriella, called the moose a cow and her mom said, no, it's a moose, she says, okay, it's a moose. That's accommodation. She is changing her schema. In the beginning though, when she said, oh look, it's a cow, she was trying to assimilate that new looking animal into her schema for what a cow is. So assimilation is just when you are incorporating it into your understanding of the world and accommodation is when you are correcting it. So another example of this is if you have a child at the beach um, who's playing with a beach ball and then a few weeks later you take her to a soccer game and she points at the soccer ball and says beach ball beach ball that is her assimilating this soccer ball into what she thinks a beach ball should be when her parent or when a friend says no that's not a beach ball that's a soccer ball she changes her schema she says okay those are two different things that is accommodation a good way to remember this, accommodation, there are two C's. Think about it's changing. They're changing their schema. Whereas assimilation, you're just incorporating it into your schema. So we're going to go through the four stages of PSJ's cognitive development right now, starting with the sensory motor stage. And I would highly recommend you paying some attention to this chart in your book. You absolutely have to know these four stages. They are extremely important. So in the sensory motor stage, we're talking about uh, infancy all the way up until two years. And he calls it the sensory motor stage because children explore their environment through their senses. They pick up things, they smell things, they put things in their mouth. They're hearing lots of things. So by looking, hearing, and touching, grasping, children are making sense of their world. Children younger than six months of age, Piaget found out through his studies, do not grasp object permanence. When something goes away, when something is out of sight, it's out of mind and they think that it's going away forever. So if you hide a toy under a blanket, p children in the sensory motor stage that are younger than six months of age are not going to try to lift the blanket up and find the toy. But this little girl is eight months of age and she will because she has grasped object permanence. If you think about how children are so upset when their parents leave, most likely they're thinking in their mind, oh my gosh, she is never coming back. I'm never gonna see my mom again because they do not have object permanence. They think that when something goes away, it is never coming back. Let me show you a short video of a sensory motor. Actually, we'll skip that and come back to it. Okay, the second stage is the pre-operational stage. This is two years to six years. Piaget suggested that from around two years old to about six to seven, children are in this pre-operational stage. They are too young to perform mental 
operations. And there are lots of different sub-stages within the pre-operant operational stage. So for example, a child in this stage lacks something called conservation. If you show a child two beakers that are have the exact same amount of liquid in it and ask them which of them has more, the child is going to say, well, they have the same amount. But when you pour the water into a different looking beaker, or in this instance she holds it upside down, the child says this one has more. So they lack the sense of conservation. They basically um, do not understand that the quantity of something like liquid can remain the same despite changes in the glass that's holding the liquid. They also lack uh, irreversibility. They have the inability to reverse things. They they don't understand that. They're op uh, actually they're also excuse me perceptually bound. They use perceptual cues, not logic. So if you say um, a feather can break a glass, they and then ask them, can a feather break a piece of glass? They will say, yes, that's what you just told me. That was my perception of it. They're not using logic to make sense of the world. A lot of times, children in this stage use magical thinking. Um, this is also known as animism, so they truly believe that they're stuffed animals have um, lives and they have they can talk and things like that. Um, children in this group also tend to be um, centrated on themselves, meaning they only look at one aspect of a situation. And a lot of children in this stage are egocentric. Now if you call an adult egocentric, you are that's not a good thing. It's not a positive thing. Um, oftentimes egocentric adults are selfish. They're only looking out for for themselves. However, children who are in the pre-operational stage who are egocentric are not selfish. That just means that they cannot perceive things from another's point of view. So for example, if you've ever been watching TV with a four-year-old, the four-year-old might be standing right in front of the TV. And it's not because they're rude and they don't want you to see the TV. It's because they literally think that you can see through them. They do not understand that, hey, they're blocking the TV and they cannot, you cannot see around them. Um, the invisibility part of the pre-operational stage, if you ask a child, do you have a brother? And they said, yes. And you said, what's his name? Jim. His name is Jim. And then you ask the child, does Jim have a brother? the child will probably say no. So they can't, that's the inability to reverse things again. Um, but just because a child is egocentric in the pre-operational stage does not mean that they are selfish. Also in this stage, children lack theory of mind, which basically means um, they cannot understand someone else's mental state. If they are in the pre-operational stage, they cannot do that before forming the theory of mind. So if you say, this is Sally, this is Ann, Sally puts her ball in the red cupboard, Sally goes away, Ann moves the ball to the blue cupboard, where will Sally look for the ball? Most oftentimes, if children lack theory of mind, they will say, well, Sally's going to look in the blue cupboard, right? Because they know that and has moved the ball. However, Sally doesn't. So in reality, Sally would probably look in the red. Let me show you a short video. Look at these two glasses. Do you think that they have the same amount of juice? You think they have the same? Okay. Now we're gonna pour this juice into this glass. Now, do you think that this glass has more juice? This glass has more juice, or do you think that they have the same amount? That one has more. This one has more, and why do you think that this one has more? Because the, it's taller. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more quarters, or do they have the same? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, They're the same? Five, five. Okay. Okay. Does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more or do they have the same? 
So she's lacking conservation. She does not understand this because she's in the pre-operational stage.